We support a notification condition type that uses our performance equation syntax. Now this is the same performance equation syntax that we've used for years and years. So this brings up a, an enormous topic. What do you put in this expression here? This is what we're, we're doing here. We're using an expression field to type some type of expression. And then we're going to evaluate that expression and then send the notification based on whether it evaluates to true or false. And you know we can do all the other things you'd associate with it. We can associate it with a group. We can have time true, etc. All those good options are still available. But that doesn't answer the question as to what we do right here. And to get that answer, there's a couple places I would go. First of all, we discussed this briefly. If you look in the uh, notifications user guide, you'll find a couple of examples. They're pretty simple examples, and, and the syntax is described for making reference to different uh, different elements there and attributes. But the best place to go to find out more information about this is to go out to our tech support website. Uh, go to the section called Download Center. And within Download Center, what we're looking for is under the documentation, go under User Manuals. And the user manual you're looking for is for the Pi server. So under Products, choose the Pi server. And what you're looking for is the Applications User's Guide. So the Pi Server Applications Guide, I should say. So I'll go ahead and search. And in the search results, you should see it's called the Pi Server Applications Guide. There we go. And that Pi Server Applications Guide has an entire chapter on nothing but performance equations and performance equation syntax and the different functions for performance equations. So you know this is where we suggest you go if you want to know more about all the different variety of expressions you can use right here. So let's do something real straightforward. Uh, I want to do something real simple just based on the current value of uh, one of the tags or one of the attributes in this target right here. So now if we look at our target again, that's called monitored tags. Monitored tags has well a couple of targets we can use real easily. Uh, I've got one called sine wave that's simply a 24-hour sine wave that goes between 0 and 100. And here's another one called endpoint control, which is a controller status. Let's use the first one, the sine wave, for right now. I'll do a new condition that's performance equation based. And we're simply going to say, is sine wave greater than 50? Now you notice the IntelliSense kind of a feature where we, we're going to go ahead and highlight things in red until we can verify that the syntax is correct. Now, if I go ahead and evaluate this, as you can see right now it says it's true. If I were to switch this to a less than 50, it should say that it's false. Okay, now that's a real simplistic example. Uh, we have a whole raft of functions that are really uh, geared for folks that are in manufacturing or using real-time data, I should say. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to look at this set of functions, just do a control space. It's going to give you, again, like IntelliSense in Visual Studio, it's going to give you a list of all the different functions available. And there are a lot of functions. Now, these are the functions we've developed over the years uh, for folks that are working with real-time data. So for example, I'll give you a good example of that, um, something you really won't find. You're not going to find this in Excel or even in Visual Studio. Uh, this is a function called time greater than. As you can see, uh, well, that's the syntax right there. What we're doing is we're going to return the number of seconds that a value has been greater than an amount for a given period of time. So for example, I'm going to say, let's use that sine wave as an example. Let's see how long sine wave. Let's go with the last, last 24 hours. I'm going to say y plus 7 hours. Again, this is our performance equation syntax to t plus 7 hours. And I'm going to say, let's see how long that's been, or how long that's been greater than 50. Okay. Now if I go ahead and evaluate this, as you can see, it comes out to, it's reporting in seconds how long it's been greater than 50. Is 86,000 seconds in a day? 86,400? Well, no big surprise here. This sine wave that oscillates between 0 and 100 has been greater than 50, exactly 43,000 seconds. So that's an example, of course, of how you, know, how, uh, you can make use of this. And if I, if I wanted to see this in a little bit more useful uh, way, I can say uh, divide that by 
the number of seconds in a day, and it's telling me about 49% of the time. So where would you use something like this? Well, if I'm trying to figure out whether people are running the plant the way I would normally expect to see it, I could do something like this. The time greater than that, it's been uh, uh, greater than that. And let's see if that expression, you know, using all the right operators we normally use, excuse me, we normally use within an expression syntax. Let's see, is that greater than, oh, let's say 40%. Uh, Oh, and not 40. Uh, this should be 0.4. Remember, we're dealing with uh, decimals here. So is that true or false? Well, if we evaluate this, as you can see, it evaluates to true. So it's definitely been greater than 50, more than 40% of the time. Has it been greater than 50, 60% of the time? Uh, no, that's false. So as you can see, that's the type of thing we see people doing with this. Um, give you another example. We have a function called time equals time EQ. As you can see, we recognized it. And for this, let's use that other target or the, the attribute in our target. That was called the endpoint control. That endpoint control should normally be auto. Endpoint control. So what I'd like to do is figure out how long that has been equal to the word auto. And I'll take the result of that and divide it by 86,400 so that I, you know, I see a percentage. If I really wanted to get clever, I'll take the whole thing and multiply it by 100 so we see it actually as a percentage. Now, it's telling me that 22% of the time that value is in auto. Let's see how long it's in manual. About 11% of the time. Okay, so this is an example of where you know where people are or why people are using functions like this to monitor real-time data. Uh, you just will not find this kind of function within if you were to do this as, for example, uh, a calculation using the raw data in Excel. You really won't find Excel functions that are geared towards this. So I, I strongly recommend you go out to our server documentation. Go out and find this chapter on performance equation syntax and take a look at the different functions available. And I just scrolled down to take a look at this. As you can see, these are some of the functions that are going to be available from within performance equations. So, yeah, lots of good functions for working with real time data. Now, there's a couple of other points I'd like to make about this. And in addition to being, you know, something that can refer to items that are in the current target, everything I've done so far, I've selected within the, the current target. That sinus, that sine wave, this endpoint control, right? They're in that current target. But I could simply make references to pi tag names. So, for example, I can make reference to uh, on my pi server, which is called OSI Soft TRNG. I can make reference to uh, specific pi tags. Uh, the pi tag would be, let's look at sinusoid. That's that sine wave I was telling you about. And let's see if that's currently greater than 50. If we evaluate that, that is actually true. And um, I can even just leave that by itself. If we evaluate it, it's showing me the current value. So you see, that's how we make reference to the server. That's the pi server I'm connected to, and that's the pi tag. We can also make reference to the elements that are not in this particular database, which is a very powerful feature because this now can, this equation essentially can span all of your different databases. Let me give you an example. I'll go back and take a look at the ones we've been looking at so far. These are our, you know, our endpoint control. This is our sine wave. Notice there's an option here called copy path. When you copy this path, it allows you to uh, essentially to paste uh, into that expression the path to this particular element attribute in this particular database. So the nice thing about that is if I go to a different database, let's go to the training sample. I'll go ahead and check in these changes. Now once I'm in here, now I can go out to, oh, let's say something I'm interested in the Houston division. Uh, we've got uh, a heat exchanger, and this heat exchanger has a, an outlet temperature. I can copy this path and make use of this, make reference to this within my performance equations. You see it's currently 46. 
So let's go build a notification on this. So this, for this, I'll go back to my original database, go back to my notifications. Here's my sample that I've been using, and I'll add this as a performance equation. Uh, how would I use it? I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in there with a single quote. It does require single quotes. Now when I ended that single quote, it did recognize that. Boy, that's a pretty long reference, but as you can see, it drilled down through the hierarchy. And I can say, is it, you know, is this value greater than 30? That's my expression. That's my, my calculation here. Uh, evaluate this, and that's true. Yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, simplistic here, just saying, is it greater than 30? Uh, but the, you know, we could use this in a much more complex calculation. But the one thing that's interesting now is we do have a way of reaching out to the element attributes that are in a different target. Uh, so far, when we've been using the straight comparisons, which are just as simplistic as this, we've been limited to what's in the target. As you can see here, you're not limited if you're going to use this as a performance equation. And one final note, uh, and maybe this is belaboring the obvious, but there's no problem with mixing and matching these uh, references. So I made a reference to an, ex a, um, an element attribute that was outside the target, this one right here, and then I can also make reference to one that's inside the target. So in this case, I'm simply saying, is that, that outlet temperature currently greater than the sine wave? If I remember correctly, I think that should come up as false. Yeah, that's coming up as false. So, you know, that's, uh, that's an example of how we can go out and find these values that are coming in from other parts of your AF database. You're not simply limited to the target that you currently selected. Now, these other things that we see here are configured just the same as any other comparison. So those are, those are still going to work the way you're used to seeing them work. Well, now that I've configured my expression, of course, you then have to determine how you're going to trigger this. Now, as we've seen before, you can simply switch this to periodic and then specify a, a one minute frequency or whatever you'd like. Uh, but the point I wanted to make is if you choose natural, when we choose natural, what we're looking at now is it's a calcul or it's a notification that's going to trigger whenever one of these components change. So if we get a new value for any of these components within here, then at that point, we're going to go ahead and, and recalculate that notification. And depending on that calculation result, may result in a notification.